Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to be expanding on my search for the best moving average to use when analyzing individual stocks, with the goal being to have some data to back up why we would or wouldn't use certain moving averages. So I've got a whole selection of stocks that I've analyzed for this study. Facebook, Apple, I've got Tesla, Microsoft, and then I have some more conservative and or dividend type stocks like Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, Walmart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a simple moving average trading strategy, like in my other video where we buy above one moving average, and then we sell when we cross below another. So in the SPY video, the best moving average was the 75 to buy, and then to sell was the 170. Common moving averages like 50 and 100 and 200 day are used very often, but at least what I found through back testing over the last 20 years was that the 75 and the 170 combination worked the best for the S&P 500. I'll test some of those moving averages as well as the 75 and 170 and let you know what I found to be the best moving averages to use for the individual stocks in this video. So before we get into the video, if you like this content and you want to support the channel, all I ask is that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know if there's another topic you want to see me analyze or back test or do a deep dive on. So I really appreciate that and let's get into it. So I'm actually going to jump straight into the results of the study and show you the ratio between the performance with the moving average average trading strategy versus the performance of just the buy and hold over the same time period. So anything under one means that buy and hold performed better and anything greater than one means the trading strategy worked better. So the first thing that I want to look at is that a moving average trading strategy was not well suited for several stocks in this study. Looking at Tesla, Microsoft, PayPal, a lot of these stocks that went straight up and to the right, there was pretty much no better option than buying and holding an asset like that. So I think if we had looked at Tesla before this year, that may have been a pretty different story. But because of how much they've shot up this year, there was no amount of trading, at least using moving averages, that could improve that. So buy and hold will be the best strategy when you have one of these types of stocks. But you're not always going to know when you're holding on to a future Tesla or Microsoft. But this doesn't mean that even for these types of stocks, these moving averages are totally useless. They can still be helpful to try and decide when to enter or determine which way the momentum is going. Same goes for Microsoft and PayPal. Pretty low amount of volatility, just straight up and to the right. Now, if we look at stocks like Facebook, Apple, Netflix, there were a lot of these that a moving average trading strategy was able to double the results or in the case of Nvidia or Sony, you know, it was multiples above the performance of buy and hold. One type of stock that really doesn't seem to benefit well from these is sort of a low volatility value or your more conservative stock plays. So the Johnson & Johnson, Verizon, Coca-Cola, Walmart, those were all consistently pretty low performers using the trading method. So the software that I use to do this research is called TrendSpider, and I'm really enjoying using it. I've had it for about a week on their free trial, and I'll be using it for a couple more months at least so I can do some more analysis like this. I've got a link in the description below. You can do a seven-day free trial. And then they're also running a 50% off holiday special right now. So it's not just a back testing software, but that's primarily what I've used. It's also a full on charting software with alerts and scanners. So make sure you check that out if you want to try and test some of these strategies yourself or see if you can find ways to improve them. Again, I'm not looking for these as a standalone strategy. I'm trying to find some indicators that work well over a variety of assets that we can use as guideposts to make investment decisions on. So the second takeaway that I wanna share with you, if I made a strategy for one asset and it performed really well, it didn't necessarily mean that that performance would translate to another asset. So I'm looking at Amazon here, for example, and you can see that this strategy was more profitable than the buy and hold, but the criteria for this one is just an 11-day SMA for buys and a 245-day SMA for sells. So this is practically like buying and holding. You can see that just very early on in the trade history, it made a couple trades that outperformed and the rest of the performance was just aligned with Amazon's buy and hold performance. And you see if I apply the same strategy to Netflix, I've actually underperformed quite a bit with Netflix. So my performance is almost half when I use the strategy that overperformed buy and hold for Amazon. And also Netflix was one of the better ones to trade with a lot of these strategies. So if I use the strategy that I ended up liking the most, which was the 30 day and the 210 day with Netflix, I almost tripled the performance of buy and hold. So I learned pretty early on that the MA that I was going to choose was probably going to have a compromised performance on certain assets. And I was going to have to find something that 
gave me the best overall performance, not necessarily tailor one to a certain asset. So that's going to bring me to takeaway number three, which is that the 75-170 SMA strategy that I found worked pretty well for SPY didn't work well at all for any of the individual stocks. So going into this, I had a hunch that this would be the case since individual stocks are a lot more volatile than the index. And this is because the index summarizes the performance of a whole bunch of stocks versus just looking at one stock which is gonna be subject to a lot more volatility. So what's cool about TrendSpider is I can click this here and I can look at the actual trades. And when I went back and looked at them and I compared the moving averages and I saw where it was entering, it was pretty obvious that the buy signal was missing a big portion of the move and waiting way too long to enter for a lot of these stocks. So I started to shorten that. I went as far down as 11 uh, because this was still the time that I was looking for a profitable strategy for some of those stocks that I ended up not finding a profitable strategy like PayPal and Microsoft. And that led me going almost down to as low as possible. But I found on the stocks that were tradable, the best performance, that sweet spot was somewhere in the, between 25 and 35. So I just kind of fine tuned that. And I'm just displaying some of the highlights of the combinations that I tried. So that was all with 170 as the sell signal. And then I started to back the sell signal off a little bit. I did the same thing. I saw that shortening it really wasn't helping at all. I went towards the 100 day moving average and the further down I went, the worse everything got. So then I tried the 200 day moving average. So that's a very commonly used moving average and one that I always thought had a good bit of merit, maybe because just so many people follow it. So I checked that one out and you can see here at 30, 200, the results were pretty good, but then I moved beyond the 200 day to the 210 day and that improved the performance a good bit and maybe that's because the 200 day creates some false sell signals for a lot of other people and actually the 210 day uh, works better i have to look at more stocks this is still a relatively small sample size considering just how many stocks are out there but i did continue to go past 210 to onto 225 you can see here and that didn't improve the results at all and so i settled on 210 so 30 and 210, so that brings us to the last takeaway, which was that 30 and 210 were the best SMAs that I found to use. And what I wanna do is just look at a couple of the stocks using those and see how they performed. So the one thing that could improve all these strategies that I'll cover in my next video is an upper sell signal. So you'll notice that the 210 day may do a good job of protecting us on the downside, but we have nothing to take advantage of large swings to the upside. So that's something I'll be covering in the next video. So first we'll look at one that performs well, which is Netflix, which I've gone ahead and pulled the graph back to 2016, just to show you a little bit what it's doing. And so it got a little chopped up before this, but then it entered long and it just stays long until about November, 2018. And then it has a nice exit um, before some volatility Again, it's a little choppy. These are parts of where the moving average strategy doesn't do a really good job, I would say, is once you're under the cell EMA, you get a lot of whipsaw signals. It has a little bit of trouble here in 2019. So then after that exit, it keeps getting whipsawed until the end of the volatility this year. And it goes long in March, and it's still long right now. But you can see it's a long way down to the cell signal. And that's why we need that upper cell signal that I'm talking about. Let's look at one that did not perform well. So if we look at Microsoft, we can see that just the 210 day was just a bad sell signal, at least the last two times it was broken. So recently in March, it sold basically at the bottom and then waited to get back in, you know, until it hit the 30 day. And then if we go back to the beginning of 2019, it also sold out and just kind of got whipsawed when it really didn't need to. These are just meant to be guidelines, but now we've got a little bit of data to understand how they work. If anything, I think this 200, 210 day moving average really acts as a nice line of support for some of these very bullish stocks. And if that support isn't held and it's broken, it looks like that's where more downside can potentially come. Although we do have the opportunity for false breakouts like in the case of Microsoft. And we also 
also have to remember that in many cases, there was no moving average strategy by itself that was able to beat the buy and hold method for some of these stocks. But I would encourage you to check out TrendSpider, use the referral link, take advantage of their seven day trial and just play with a couple of these moving averages and all the different types of indicators that they've got in the software. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Make sure you leave a comment with the type of indicators that you're using. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.